Taylor Mincha Kane, also known as the Bloody Handed God, is the Eldari God of War, Bloodshed and Murder. He is one of the few gods of the Eldari Pantheon to have survived the fall of the Eldari, where the other gods were destroyed and consumed by the newly birthed Chaos God Slanesh, along with Chagorak, the Laughing God, and Isha, the Goddess of Life, who now resides within the realm of Nurgle. When Slanesh was born, Cain fought the newest Chaos God in a brutal duel. While Slanesh was ultimately stronger, she was not strong enough to destroy Cain completely. Instead, Cain would be shattered into many fragments. Each piece of the Bloody Handed God's form would take root within the core of each of the craft worlds, where they would become entities known as avatars. When the inhabitants of the craft worlds train in the art of war by walking the path of the warrior, they all take up the mantle of an aspect warrior, each type of aspect warrior representing a different aspect of Cain himself. The Dark Reaper aspect, for example, represents Cain as the destroyer, whereas the Striking Scorpion's aspect represents Cain as the ambusher. And yet, despite being a god of the Eldari, is it possible that Cain is simply another name for the Chaos God Khorne? Like Cain, Khorne is a god of bloodshed, destruction and murder, and is often described as a god of war. In addition to also bearing names that are highly similar, both gods are often associated with blood, with Cain being the bloody-handed god, whose hand eternally drips with the blood of Eldenesh, a hero from ancient Eldari folklore, and Khorne being the blood god, who cares not from whence it flows, only that it does. Khorne himself is also known by many other names as opposed to just Khorne. One such name, Khan, is used within the religious texts upon the world of cultures, and many members of the World Eaters Traitor Legion refer to Khorne as Karneth within their native language of Nagrakali. This in turn means it's not entirely unfeasible to assume, given the similarity of their names, that Cain and Khorne may be linked in one way or another. There is also the fact that the unique headdress sported by Cain within his various depictions sports a superficial similarity to the rune of Khorne itself. Another link comes from Warhammer Fantasy, with the race known as the Dark Elves, and a specific unit found within their forces, known as Witch Elves. The Witch Elves are members of an all-female cult who are amongst the most frenzied followers of Cain, residing in temples dedicated to the worship of the bloody-handed god. The doctrines and creed of the Witch Elf cult is very similar to that followed by many worshippers of Khorne, being focused on the spilling of blood and the murder of others. This even extends to an annual holiday amongst Dark Elf society known as Murder Night, where witch elves prowl the streets in search of victims, even breaking into houses to snatch away entire families to take back to the Temple of Cain and sacrifice them in honour of the Lord of Murder. But the main link in this regard is that the witch elf depicted upon the cover art of the 4th edition Dark Elf Army book along with several Witch Elf models that were available at the time, feature the Rune of Khorne upon their headgear. This could be just relegated to Warhammer Fantasy, but considering that the gods in both 40k and Fantasy are almost identical within both universes, as well as both universes being linked together thanks to the nature of the warp, it does mean that this particular link shouldn't necessarily be ignored. However, it seems unlikely that Cain and Khorne are the exact same entity, due to one particular passage within the novel Path of the Warrior, which detailed the events when Slanesh and Cain first fought. When the great enemy was born, the bloody-handed god brought war against she who thirsts, but was quickly vanquished by the newborn horror. The Prince of Pleasure and the Lord of Skulls fought over possession of Cain's spirit, for the bloody-handed god was a child of both, but belonged to neither. Great was the struggle in the remnants of heaven, 
but neither she who thirsts nor the master of battle prevailed. When both the rivals were exhausted, they drew up their boundaries, and in the calm eye of their wrath, Cain fell into the world of mortals. Here the bloody-handed one shattered into many fragments, unable to exist as a whole in the material realm. His power spent, his body divided, Cain's wrath was finally diminished. This passage seems to indicate that while Cain and Korn are not the same entity, it seems to imply that Cain is, supposedly, the son of Korn. This is also hinted at within the story Howl of the Banshee, by Howling Banshee Fiana when her squad is attacked by a pack of bloodletters, the lesser demons of Korn. We are here! Come, test your blades against ours and know that Cain yet despises his raging father! This hint is also strengthened later in the story by her squadmate Lorenai, when various signs of the Blood God begin to manifest throughout the craft world of Lanimaesh, such as blood beginning to seep from the walls. The Blood God began whispering his temptations to the Howling Banshees in order to bring them under his dominion. Heed not the urges of the father of our bastard master. It is not rage that we serve, but a purer war. The idea of Cain being, in a sense, birthed from corn may not be entirely unprecedented. Following the events of the War in Heaven, which the ancient Eldari themselves fought in at the behest of the Old Ones, the warp itself became a swirling tempest, and various entities began to take shape within the warp, thanks in part to the emotions of the Old Ones' creations, giving them an eventual form. As such, it's possible that the being that would eventually become Kayla Mencha Cain could have, for lack of a better term, split off from Korn, while the Chaos God still slumbered within the warp. For Korn would not awaken to full consciousness until millions of years later, during the Middle Ages of Terra's ancient history. In essence, having Korn birth the Eldari God of War, having both of them as cut from the same cloth. Given how time itself can move both forwards and backwards within warp space, it's not entirely unfeasible, but at the same time, it seems unlikely. What seems more plausible is that given the Eldari's knowledge of the perils of Chaos itself, and the claims of Cain being the son of Korn, may not be a literal statement, but more of a figurative one. Perhaps being the remnants of ancient folk tales that were originally intended as explaining the origins of their gods. But that being said, this doesn't explain as to how Cain could also be a child of Slanesh, unless that passage was more allegorical in regards to Cain's creation, simply meaning that Cain, like many entities within warp space, is little more than a byproduct of the emotions and actions of the ancient Eldari made manifest within the warp. What do you think? Is Cain a son of Corn? Are they the same entity? or something else entirely. Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.